in messy attic. <laughs> okay, well, first thing I notice in here, homeowner, is um, this vent pipe for your heating unit. Right. Um, the way that it's running across the floor, uh, elevated by cinder blocks. A, a much more effective method would be to have it just go straight through the roof. The thing is with these pipes, you want them to take the most direct route out of the house since there are pipes that are carrying the poisonous, uh, the poisonous gases, the poisonous uh, off gases from your heating. Oh. So the, the more direct route, the better. The less turns, the better. Um, it'll also increase the efficiency of your heating unit. Okay, so how do you recommend that I get that done? Um, you know, that, that's, that's really something that we would do in-house. It's a relatively simple task requiring uh, drilling a hole through the roof. Mm -hmm. um, of course, flashing around it so that it doesn't leak water in. And just running that pipe straight up onto the roof. And how long about might that take you? Um, that would be a, a, a two or three hour task. Hmm. Okay, good. Yeah, that sounds like something that would be beneficial to me. I mean, I don't want toxins coming into my home. Right. And, yeah, and, and it will pre, uh, improve the safety also. Um, especially when you do some of these air sealing things, uh, making sure that your heating unit is vented properly will be much more important once your home is sealed tightly. Okay. Okay. Um, finance wise, what what would that you think? What would that save me? What would that versus what would that cost me? Well, that more is a safety issue. As far as the savings, the savings for that particular item would be minimal. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it is an important safety matter to be looked into. All right. Very good to know. Okay. Additionally. This insulation, uh, I mean, you can see it's it's falling off the roof. Um, you had mentioned that your upstairs is colder, cold in the winter and hot in the summer. Mm -hmm. A significant portion of that, but I know that you don't have any vent, uh, any um, ducts in the upstairs, but insulating this attic properly would help maintain uh, more even temperatures throughout your house. Okay. Yeah, well, I was looking at insulation as well. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times, um, you know, the attic in the summer is going to be like 140 degrees. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it gets sweltering up here. I, I don't want to come up here in the summer. Yeah. And, uh, just try to... you know, your, your cooled air is just going to be rushing right out through the attic. Okay. Okay. So that, now that would have significant energy savings, as well as improving the comfort of your home. Um, insulating your attic might alone save you 30% in your heating bills. Wow. Heating and cooling bills. And I'll be more comfortable. Right. And uh, again, another safety issue. I mean, this stuff, look at the way it's deteriorating. It's, it's retaining the dust from all over the house. Um, yeah, makes it, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty gross stuff, really. So, um... Right. Yeah, yeah well, I was looking into uh, getting some new stuff. You were talking about foam? Can you tell yes. me a little bit about that? Is that applicable up here? Yeah, you know, this is a... This would be a relatively simple job to, to do foam in because, you know, you can stand up in here. The, mm -hmm. the foam sprayer would be able to just walk around with the hose and just spray each bay entirely. Remove all of these uh, insulation panels. Oh, definitely. Yeah, this stuff, I mean, it's it's super old, you know. Um, yeah. Well, you know, like besides the fact that it's falling off the, of yeah, besides that it's falling off the, the attic deck, it's um, just grody. Yeah. <laughs> it's not really healthy to breathe this stuff in. Right, right. The fact that it's falling off the, of. yeah, besides that it's falling off the, the attic deck, it's... Um, just grody. Yeah. <laughs> it's not really healthy to breathe this stuff in. Right, right. The attic isn't really well sealed off from the rest of your house. Uh, that's another um, option. That another alternative is to um, seal off the attic from the house and just insulate the attic floor. But I mean, this is a pretty nice area. This could be usable living space. 
if the insulation was um, upgraded. Okay, good to know. Okay. Great. All right, so let's. So, yeah. Yeah, let's let's get back to the blower door now. All right, let's go back downstairs. All right. Uh, so what are you doing right now? I'm setting up the blower door, and what we're trying to do is get a, a tight fit to um, seal off this entry as best we can to the house to get an accurate reading uh, uh, when we hook it up. And you're looking for leaks with this? This blower door test? Oh yeah, we're going to be able to locate some leaks around the house that you wouldn't otherwise notice as distinctively. As the gaping hole in the basement. Right. Okay, good. Good. Okay, it looks like you set it up. Yeah. Now we're going to um, get a baseline pressure right to the outside. And takes about 30 seconds. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, can you tell me a little bit about um, your certifications and are you insured? I mean, I, I guess I should have asked you this before I invited you into the house, but I saw your website, so. Well, yeah, we're fully insured, um, liability insurance, etc. cetera. Uh, we're, we're home improvement contractors, we've got our license. And uh, as far as my training, um, to become BPI certified, which is the Building Performance Institute, um, they're based in New York. And they're uh, an organization that monitors contractors to make sure that they're performing at the, the highest level. Um, they may, you know, choose some homes to come back and, and uh, do quality control checks. So they, they have a real strict policy on, you know, making sure that the, their contractors follow procedure uh, the safety testing is like their number one thing. We perform the safety tests here, the gas test and the carbon monoxide test. Um, and I am Building Performance Institute certified in as a building analyst, a shell specialist, and a heating specialist. Okay, good. So and you're fully insured. Fully insured. Great. Yes. So um, those things will entitle me to do all this testing and make recommendations to you. And, um, you know, you can feel secure that I've had extensive training and also have a, a higher authority that I have to answer to. Cool. Good to know. So we had a baseline. Okay. We've got our baseline. And now we're going to remove these doors. From the fan. And we're going to fire this thing up. Pressurize the house to 50 pascals. What does that mean? Um, it's, a, it's a unit of measurement. This manometer here, this, this device is called a manometer, uh -huh. and it'll let us know when we're at 50 pascals. Now, what's the significance of 50 pascals? The Energy Conservatory has, has done many tests using this blower door and they've found that 50 pascals gets you the most accurate reading of CFM leakage in our, our residential home. Okay. Okay, we've got this fan sucking 
daylight really good through the whole edge of this door. Yeah, there's no molding right there, huh? Yeah. Uh, some weather stripping would really help out this door and help close off the... Help seal it up a little bit better. Okay. <laughs> okay. And this wall is, is open. There's no insulation in here whatsoever. This particular area is creating a significant amount of leakage. Now when you, when you prepare to close this up, you want to make sure to get ample insulation in here and the highest R value that you can get. And you can tell that because the smoke pen is not blowing towards it. You can see the smoke blowing into the house from this area. Uh, right here, you see that the smoke is... Since the fan is over that way, it's pulling air in from the outside. And this smoke pen, the, the direction that the smoke is... Now, I mean, we can actually feel this air here. Mm -hmm. But, um, you viewers, you can see the smoke blowing in from the outside. Significant leak. Board boards are torn up. It's accentuating the amount of air flowing in from the crawl space. But as we noticed earlier, uh, in addition to the, the door that's open to the outside, the... Um, the underfloor of the crawl space is not insulated. So, insulating that, now you can see this, this is a wow. This is a wow blow. That's vigorously <laughs> blowing directly at us. Yes. So, adding insulation to the um, ceiling of the crawl space and the remainder of the basement will help mitigate this leak. This here, where you've already installed some of this R13 insulation, mm -hmm. you can still feel the air flowing around the edges of that insulation. Something like a foam would, would cut down the, the air that can leak around the insulation. The foam will actually act as a, an air sealer and an insulator. Oh yeah, that is definitely still flowing. And actually these windows here, they're single pane windows, but you're going to find that there are many other um, upgrades that are going to give you a quicker payback than windows. You know, oftentimes people think of, let me replace my single pane, now single pane windows are pretty, pretty, um, low end as far as energy efficiency goes. Maybe. Right. Yeah. But so well, we're all in upgrading the, right upgrading here. the insulation is uh, more of a priority almost every case than replacing the windows. More of a priority and a quicker payback. So you're gonna get more bang for your buck replacing the insulation than replacing your windows. What about little things like lighting? I, I heard something about compact fluorescence. Is that what yeah, you're well, talking about? You know, lighting, um, replacing incandescent lights with a compact fluorescent can save uh, up to 25% on your electric bill. Wow. Now, if you have an all-electric house, it might slightly differ, but in a house like yours where you've got a gas, a gas heater and a majority of your electric bill is coming from appliances and lighting, replacing those lights with compact fluorescence will not only save you money, but reduce the number of times you have to change the light bulb. Compact fluorescence lasts for, like, five to ten times longer than the average incandescent bulb. Okay, it'll reduce the drain from the nuclear power plants that are running in the state, huh? Right. A lot of people are selling compact fluorescents now. And actually in Australia, they've banned selling incandescents altogether.